Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we will be going over how to import and apply the CSGO lobby animations. These are the animations that when you load up the game they play and you can like choose which map you want to play on in the game mode and all that. You're going to need to watch my video on how to import the CSGO animations and models into Blender. This will give you the animations and the models that you will need. Everything that you'll need in this video can be found in the other video. You'll just need the add-ons to import the uh, source material. So that will be the models and the animations. And you'll also get the models and the animations from that video. You can also get the models and animations from my Discord, which can be found in the description below. I will also link all the add-ons and stuff that you will need for this video, uh, just in case. So when you load up CSGO, you'll get a player walking on. It'll either be the CTSAS or one of the terrorist models, and it'll usually have some sort of gun. The models and the animations that uh, load up when you play the game are sort of random. Uh, I think they always walk on, which is like the first animation I'll show you. And then I'll do like looking behind or looking away or whatever. And I'm just going to show you how to combine them and put the animations together. The animations I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making the same one that I showed earlier in the video so that it matches as best as possible. So with that being said, let's start first thing we're going to need to do is click A which is going to select everything in our scene we're also going to click delete to get rid of it we're going to come up to our scene collection and delete our collection here we're also going to come down to our scene properties we're going to come to frame rate we're going to change the frame rate from 20 fps to 30 fps next we're going to come up to file Import source engine and we're going to find our folder that has all of our models and animations in there so mine are in blender resources animations and models csgo models we're going to go to player we're going to scroll down to custom player and we're going to go into ui player funny enough they're not in the lobby player folder but they're in ui and we're going to go to load out. These are the animations that you want. On top of that, every time you load the game, you'll get different animations. So let me just show you. So if we go into animation set UI player, uh, any of these CT or T animations can load up in any order uh, apart from the walk. Up. I think the walk up is always first because that's how they come onto the scene. But for example, one time you could get like a pistol walk up and then he like looks behind or weight shifts, or another day he could weight shift and then look behind. Like there's no, I don't think there's any set ones. Um, so you can sort of make your own anyway. So that's why we're going to need to get our animations, uh, put them in the order that we want and we'll like combine all the animations that we need. Before we import any of the animations, we need a special skeleton and it's called anime set UI player loadout qc. We're going to untick import animations and untick create collections and then we're going to we're going to import it. Here we go. Next we're going to give ourselves a player model and a weapon. So we're going to import with source engine. Um, like I said, you can use any character model you want, as long as it's in custom player and legacy. I'm going to stick with the SAS uh, just so you can see like the animations match very much exactly. As it does in the game. Something important here, we want the CTSAS.SMD, this is like 
all the body and then they've got the gloves separately to select the gloves we're going to do control left click make sure you do not import the qc as when we import it with the qc it already comes with a skeleton and we don't want that we want our uh, base mesh to get applied to this skeleton here so once you have uh, selected both your message which is the base glove and the play model we can import it all right to check this we can click on the skeleton click G to move and you can see it moves around with the mesh you can uh, join the body and the mesh if you want to so if I click on the main body and click G as you can see the gloves don't come with it so you don't really need to do this but if you want to you can click on the gloves and then we're gonna hold down shift left click on the body then click ctrl J to join the two as you can see if I move the uh, base mesh now the gloves come with it okay Next, we're going to need a weapon. Now, you can't, depending on the animation that you want to use, you're going to need to match the uh, mesh with it. So, for example, uh, make sure to have your skeleton selected just in case. Let's say you wanted a certain animation. So, as you can see, there are sp specific animations for certain weapons and weapon types. So if you wanted to use the FAMAS idol, you would need to attach the FAMAS uh, weapon model to our player weapon uh, player model. It's the same for all of these. So if you've got a frag grenade, you would <coughs> use these animations. If you've got any of the heavy weapons, which I think are the shotguns, it could be the energies, I can't quite remember. Uh, same with the knives, you don't have to use the default knives, you can use any knives, you can use like the karambit, gah, whatever, as long as this is a knife it will work. So the one in our scene uses a deagle. So we're going to go back to weapons, we're going to need the world view model, and we're going to find a pistol, and we're going to find a deagle, so here we go deagle open up and the same as before we need the base mesh and we want the mag to come along with it we're then going to import and as you can see our deagle has already been put into the hand of our character and if we decide to move him around forget the skeleton decide to move him around it's all attached now I've already looked at the animation that I wanted and I managed to break it down into the three animations that we need. The first one is the wall cut. The second one is the scan screen, which is where he cuffs his hand. And the third one is the look screen shake hand where he shakes his arm. If you want to get an exact animation, you'll need to like record one probably, or just you can just combine them however you want. But I only knew which animations I needed by importing them into blender and seeing if they matched with the ones in game so we're gonna have our skeleton and model selected we're gonna go back to our animations that we need ui player loadouts and animations we're gonna come down and as we have a pistol in our hand, we're going to use the pistol animations and we're using the CT ones because that's the model we decided to use. So, and it's also the one that is in the game. We need... <laughs> Walk up first. Make sure import animations is ticked and we're just going to import it. As you can see, he is now standing up. And if we click play, he's now moving around and the animation's all good. 
Great stuff. Is this the right one, though? I don't think this is the right one. Full cut. Never mind, I'm not sure which one I chose. Uh, but this is actually the correct one. <laughs> I've really it with. This is the full cup. <laughs> Alright, perfect. So I just play the animation, and that's exactly why we're playing it. In case you make a silly mistake like that. And just to make sure that it works. Next, we need the scan screen animation. With our model and skeleton selected, we're going to import that animation. I'm gonna scroll down and where is it? Pistol scan the screen. Pretty sure this is the one. We're gonna import it. This is the one where he cuffs his hands. So I'm just gonna turn the skeleton off and we're gonna click space to play. And here we go. He's cuffed his hand. So I know that is the correct animation. Now, as you can see, our look, our walk up animation is actually gone. Um, so what we're going to do is, is first we're going to import all of our animations and this is important um, because we just need to do it for the next step uh, when we end up combining the animations and putting them all in order together. So don't worry that the first animation has disappeared. The third animation we need is the look screen shake hand animation. So, got look screen shake hand animation, and we're going to click import. And let's just knock this down to zero and click play. This is the one where his arm shakes. As you can see, it happens right there. Great. So, we've got all of our animations. Now we just need to put them all together. What we're going to do is we're going to come down here, we're going to click on non-linear an animation or some of you might have heard NLA. Once we're in our NLA tab, we're going to click on this button here and it says push down action, push down action onto the top of an NLA stack as a new strip. We're just going to click that. Next, we are going to need to add more tracks so that we can add more animations together. You don't necessarily need to do it this way. I think there are other ways of doing it. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not, I haven't used the NLA track very much. Um, but I found this to be the best way. So, um, I've seen people do it where they have just put animation here and then you put the next animation after it and the next animation after it and for some reason I don't know why if I, I might be doing something wrong but I keep on getting uh, issues with the animations so I just found it easier to just pile up the tracks and just to do it that way so that's the way I'm going to show you I'm not sure if it's the best way but at the moment it works and it's all good so with our NLA track selected we're going to click add tracks and you can see it's added another NLA track. We're going to click on the new one that's been created and we're just going to click add tracks again. So we need three tracks because we have three animations. Now as you can see, we have our look screen shake hand animation and this is the last one in our sequence. And the way we're going to work is we're going to work from top to up. So I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to move it up to the correct track that needs to be on and it's going to come in a bit later so i'm just going to push it out to the side for now i'm going to select the first nla track i'm going to click add and we're going to click add action strip and this is where all our animations are so as you can see i made a mistake and i imported the p90 which is why it looked a bit weird and off to me um but the whole point is, is the reason why we needed to import these animations is so that it would come up in this screen here. You can import them whenever you want, uh, but I just find it to just get all the animations in and then you'll just have a nice simple list of all the animations you have. Anyway, so we're going to use the walk up animation. We're going to 
going to click on it and I'm just going to drag it to the beginning at zero that's where the animation starts we're going to click play and as you can see all works good and it stops around about here uh, just because we need to adjust our timeline which we can do um, you can do it now if you want to or you can do it later I'm just going to do it later next we need to add our NLA track um, next we need to next we need to click on our next NLA track for our next animation and our animation is going to start at the end of this one so I'm just going to scroll over and I'm just going to have it in line with the end so I'm going to import the next one uh, so we're going to click add add action strip and we want the scan screen which is this one perfect and this one naturally ends uh, which it oh, I actually previews it which is nice so as you can see if we look in he cuffs his hand don't know if you can see that but yeah he cuffs his hand and the third animation which is here we're going to also drag this to the end of our second animation which is here so it's all good and you can play around you can see working so we're going to go back to our timeline in fact actually i'm going to click on what you can do if you don't know what frame your thing ends at you can drag to find it out but I think it ends at 575 or you can click N on your keyboard go down to strip and you can see that the, uh, the active strip the frame end is at 575 so when we go back to our timeline we can just change the end to 575 and now if we click play as you can see, our first animation is working. Then our second one kicks in. And then our third one will follow up afterwards. So that's the end of the tutorial, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any uh, video ideas or videos you want to see, please let me know in the comments down below. Feel free to join my Discord if you have any problems and need some extra help. Uh, thank you for watching, see ya.